Bring in show music, please. Hi, I'm CNBC producer Katie Kramer. Today on Squawk Pod. Robinhood CEO Vlad Tenev, the trading app's growth plans, launching its first credit card. What we'd like to do is build a world where for our customers, all of their assets are custodied at Robinhood and every financial transaction goes through Robinhood. And credit is just such a critical part. Remember the viral video of the Neuralink patient playing chess with his mind? Former FDA head Scott Gottlieb on the regulation around brain implants. This is a technology that we've been working on for a while. Neuralink is another entrant into this space. I do believe it has promise. Plus, the latest on the Baltimore Bridge collapse, GameStop's big miss, and the NFL's early holiday gift. We need a game on Christmas, guys. It's Wednesday, March 27th. Squawk Pod begins right now. Stand Becky by in three, two, one. Cue it, please. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Squawk Box right here on CNBC. We are live from the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. I'm Becky Quick, along with Joe Kerna, and Andrew is off today. Here we go. It's Wednesday. Well, really, it's, ki- it's really, it's really kind of Thursday, which is the best oh, day. Because it's Good Friday. And it's even Forgot better. Until you just said that. You know how good Thursdays are, because it's the anticipation of Friday. Yeah. So this we even a nice long roll up. We have an even more. Forgot. We have even more time till Monday. Markets will be closed on Friday for yep. Good Friday. Um, we will be off air. But this morning you're seeing uh, gains with Bitcoin. This morning at uh, just above seventy thousand, seventy thousand and sixty three. And cocoa prices yesterday at another all time high. There are is talk about now the weather conditions and the problems they're having with disease with the crops in West Africa, leading to a huge, huge decline. They're talking about a deficit this year of something like 374,000 tons. That compares to last year's deficit, last season's deficit of just about 75,000. So a huge increase in the decline in supply. You probably can't get a solid money this year. Probably not. Well, you can. It just costs you. One of those that you try to hold and it crumbles, and you you like the I don't I don't I I think solid. solid I think you. I thought my parents were cheaping out. When, when I got the... No, I like it. It's too hard. You're going to break your tooth on those solid ones. Mm. This horrible story, when you think about what actually happened, and I'm going to tell you about it now, but did you see the May Day? The May Day said... Yes. But when you watch the video, they, the May Day, the, the cops must have stopped the traffic seconds before the, it, the, it went video, down. That video, by the way, was in sped up. It was, if you look closely... Okay, so the, the semis that I see... The, that you see by, but yeah. it still was a matter it, of it minutes. Is, it, they it's were a matter of incredible minutes. heroes. Right. A, to be able to send out that May Day when they were dealing when they with did. Such, that chaos on the ship. B, for the police officers to be able to stop traffic. It, it, because it, if you were watching, there were a lot of cars that went by in the moments leading. I was up. immediately thinking it, it makes the initial reaction of you guys got to pitch in on cleaning this up, Maersk, it, it, to, to where you're like, wow, you guys actually, yeah. you know, you lost, it might have been contaminated fuel, they're saying, might have caused the, the, the power. But, to shut down, yeah. Let's get an update now, because I, 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 I was... also the pilots, they, they have local pilots who get on board right, and, and to, steer to, them to out. Right, to steer them yeah. through. But I was worried there were a lot of cars beneath the surface, and no. it doesn't look like there's going to be an update okay. now on that bridge collapse. You can tell what we're talking about in Baltimore. Six people who were working on that bridge, unfortunately, uh, at the time of the collapse are now presumed dead. The Coast Guard says uh, the efforts to recover their bodies will continue today. Meantime, the NTSB is leading the investigation into the events that led up to uh, the crash and said a data recorder on the ship could provi- uh, provide more information. Uh, industry officials say that the vessel did, in fact, suffer a power blackout, which you could sort of see on the video, too, that disabled the engine and, therefore, the navigation equipment as well. But the cause of the system failure is still unclear. The port of Baltimore has closed the vessel traffic until further notice. It's a key entry port, though, in the U.S. for imported cars, farm equipment. It's America's second largest uh, hub for exporting coal to be sold abroad. And as for rebuilding the bridge, uh, Maryland Governor Wes Moore described it as a long-term build. Couldn't predict exactly uh, how long it would take, but some people are talking about supply chain issues and inflation and shortages, and there could be, we'll see, but there could be ripple effects across the entire economy. 
Yeah, I, I think particularly when you're looking at autom automobiles, when you're looking at farm equipment, we are getting into the spring planting season. Um, so you could look at some issues from that. The good news is I think a lot of that traffic is being diverted to other ports on the East Coast. And even though we have a strong economy, it's not so strong that these ports are working at 100%. We don't need some, so they can supply chain issues. I'm surprised at how much coal they're still exporting a lot of coal. Yeah. I guess we I mean, are. There are nations that are using. People a lot of need it. power. Yeah. You know, we're used to a certain lifestyle. Yeah. If you turn everything off, it's not going to. I saw a solar field. Did you see that? The shot of that solar field. No. The biggest solar field I've ever seen. Hail, hailstorm, destroyed. Got shut out. Wow. Well, I mean, <clears> it just the damage is significant. It's yeah. going to have to be. But I wasn't thinking about that. You can have a solar field that covers acres and acres and acres and acres. In a hailstorm, and you, you're you starting from scratch. That's why you need redundancies yes, so. on every one of these issues. Or you need, hyd or you need hydrocarbons. Well, uh, hydrocarbons, too, but you need multiple sources and ways to keep things moving. You definitely need the hydrocarbons. I don't know if you need the solar. That helps. I think eventually. I know you need renewables. I'm on it's board. It's not just I renewables. You need any and all sources. I know. Shares of GameStop selling off after a big run-up this week. Earnings and revenue for the holiday quarter fell short of analyst expectations. That tracks with softer consumer spending that was reported by gaming companies Take-Two Interactive and Electronic Arts last quarter. GameStop said that it cut an unspecified number of jobs to try and reduce costs. That stock down by 20 percent. That's a decline of about three dollars. Late last year, GameStop's board approved a new investment policy that allows it to invest in equities and other securities. In a new filing, GameStop said that it had officially given executive chair and CEO Ryan Cohen the authority to manage that portfolio with the oversight of two independent members of the board. I think it was up maybe on, on this next right. story. I mean, there, people were revisiting all those meme stocks because of, of, of Reddit. Right. Reddit shares rose again yesterday, actually up another 8.8%. And if you're looking since its IPO, uh, about the week's time since then, it's up more than 91%. That comes as the first stock rating among analysts was a hold. New Street Research issued a neutral rating on the company after the stock goes to the moon. The analyst expects volatility, volatility in Reddit's first earnings report, which is expected in May. But again, since the IPO just a week ago, up 91 percent. Merck shares are higher. The company won U.S. approval for a new treatment for a rare, dangerous form of high blood pressure. Some 40,000 Americans have something called pulmonary arterial hypertension. It's a dangerous increase in blood pressure in the lungs. Common, most common in the elderly, in women, in, and in African Americans, and the drug will be sold as Winrever in the U.S. It will cost $14,000 per vial and will be taken every three weeks. It's the first drug to actually target the root cause of the condition. Other uh, available medicines only are palliative. They only help manage uh, the symptoms. About $14,000 a vial, and a you vial. take it every three weeks? I don't know whether that's how long a vial lasts. Uh, I guess that's true if it's not just one treatment. I don't know. It's expensive. Yeah. We're going to do a story about the NFL and they're going to, uh, in the night game in Brazil, I think Peacock's going to get it. It says it's featuring the Philadelphia Eagles. And? And? Can I, I is that all I need to know? Um, or are they playing themselves? Well, that, I like the be. Eagles. Well, fine, so. but I, I just... <laughs> yeah, but, oh, you know, because it's either the Packers or the Okay, Ronalds. that's why. So they haven't decided. Inquiring minds so. want to know. The Packers are so, who? Green Bay Packers president said the NFL is still deciding between the Packers and the Cleveland Browns the as Brown. the opponents. Okay, either one would be for the pretty good. Eagles. The, so the, the, the new Packers According and the new the Browns. Athletic. Both both are, are but worthy. I mean, I just sort of sourcing that. Worthy story. competitors. Athletic. We'll get to that I'm in sorry, a second. I'm sorry, the athletic, not the Atlantic. My eyes today. Just today. No, I, I, my contacts are right. I can't see. Okay. <laughs> this is what I was talking about. News from the NFL. Uh, after previously saying it would not schedule games on Christmas because it falls on a Wednesday this year, the league is pivoting. We need a game on, on Christmas, guys. An NFL executive said the change uh, came after unexpectedly strong audiences for last season's three Christmas games. Uh, that would make sense. Uh, as a result, there will be at least one and likely two Christmas games this year. Uh, separately, the opening uh, week Friday night game is going to be played in Brazil, featuring the Philadelphia Eagles, and now we know either the Packers uh, or the Browns. It'll be exclusively available 
exclusively available. You better just sign up now. There's a lot of good stuff between now and then. NBC's Universal's uh, Peacock Streaming Service. It's the only place. NBC Universal is the parent company of this network. And Amazon's Prime Video Streaming Service has secured the rights for an exclusive uh, streaming playoff game this season. Everybody's got Amazon, don't they? Because they got Amazon Prime. Prime for delivery. Not everyone has Peacock yet. Scrolling. Well, you're going to need it if you want to watch it on a Friday. What else you got to do? You have something to do, Stack? <laughs> you're married with children. You got nothing to do. Your life. You have lots to do. Well, you got lots to do, but you're children. not like thinking about, wow, I'm going to go have a, you know. Party on, uh, Garth. No, You're not going to do that. Anybody up this hour is not party you on. You can take Friday. care of the kids with the, and, and your family responsibilities with the TV on. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, when you're the dad. Cheese will be next. Coming up next on Squawk Pod, Robin Hood launching its first ever credit card. It's gold, actual gold, and it's for everyone. But Robin Hood CEO Vlad Tenev says he isn't the only one innovating in fintech. As far as X, I think it's pretty early in the financial services journey, but it's exciting to have people innovating in our space, and if it pushes us to up our game even more, then I like that. Robin Hood goes gold card right after this. This is Squawk Pod. Good morning and welcome back to Squawk Box here on CNBC, live from the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. I'm Joe Kernan, along with Becky Quick. And Andrew is off today. It's, it's a Wednesday, but we're off Friday, so it's really like a Thursday, which is better than a Friday because it's further from a Monday, and Wednesday's even further from a Monday. So this might be the best day. Uh, Forgot that, until you said it this can, morning that we're off Friday. Yeah, you, uh, that's hard to believe. That's like that's hard to believe that you, days. it's much easier to get up uh, on a Wednesday if you have Friday off. It's hard. It's still hard for us. It's hard. Three thirty. It's hard. Uh, that alarm clock. Sometimes I want to, I want to take it. And I, I just want to slam it again, but I need it, so I can't. But <laughs> it's here, your phone. You don't <laughs> use your phone. I don't use my phone. Really? No, because then the, I have to leave it on. Then every time I had someone text me or something, I oh, wakes I don't me get up. Any, I shut off all notifications. Well, what if you need a note? You don't have kids living in other I, cities. I, it's, <laughs> right? It's, it's, they're going to call someplace else. They call the house. They could. they could. You still have a landline, Boomer? Yeah. Yeah, we do too. <laughs> Shares of Robinhood uh, rising after it unveiled its first ever credit card. The retail trading firm is entering the competitive space with its Robinhood Gold Card, offering 3% cash back on all uh, categories. The card will require a Robinhood Gold membership, and that runs about $5 a month, uh, or you can get it for $50 uh, annually. And join us now. Uh, first on CNBC is Robinhood uh, co-founder and CEO of Vlad Tenev. It's great to have you here. So Thanks big, for having me. Th- this, Always a pleasure. This is outside the box kind of, but, but then again, maybe not. Maybe it, it, it all makes sense as, as the company uh, branches out and becomes more of a financial services firm. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been saying for a while that what we'd like to do is build a world where for our customers, all of their assets are custodied at Robinhood, and every financial transaction goes through Robinhood. And credit is just such a critical part of how So that's all you use. want to do with Robinhood is, yeah, just have everybody, all their assets and everything goes through Robinhood. That, that's I it. think we'll start with those two things, and then we can <laughs> yeah. kind of, Did you bring the there, card? go beyond that. Because it is kind of unique. It's no fees, right? Yeah. 3%, what do you usually get? You don't get, I, you don't get. So there's two. That's nice. Types of credit cards. Yeah, this is the solid gold one. Do you guys want to touch gold? it? It's literally solid gold? It's, it's literally heavy. a hunk of solid gold. And yeah. there's no fee for that? You're going to give that to me for free? If you're a gold member, there's no fee. This yeah. is, you got your name on it. Yeah, yeah, so I you can don't, show it you. You didn't really bring, we don't, you, there's no Joseph Kernan Here. card. Well, give there, that back. so that anyone is. can get that if you refer <laughs> 10 friends to Robin Hood Gold. I don't want to join a club that would give me one. Uh, <laughs> and then it, you can get, so 3% is more than the normal, no fees. 5%, you want people booking travel through, through Robin Hood too. Yeah, so typical cashback cards, we've surveyed the entire landscape. Uh, The highest that's sort of like commonly available with no limits is around 2%. And a lot of cashback cards are even lower than that, 1.5. 
So 3% is beyond what anyone else offers with no limit, no minimum balance, no net worth requirement to be to be How part of the program. How do you make money on that? Like that, that sounds like it's a little risky of a strategy because the reason others are out there, I mean, unless you think everybody's not offering more just because they don't have to and they're all in collusion on doing that. I, I think, you know, credit cards are one of the most profitable segments in financial services, possibly the most profitable. Yeah, because they don't give away that much cash. They have limits on what they set on it. They have real heavy checks, hefty checks that they put on people. How, what, how do you make money? Like, how does that come back? There, there's two ways. So um, one, one way is because we sort of have a vertically integrated system, we not only earn the interchange revenue, but a credit card is also a lending product. So there's revenue on balances that customers hold. And there's generally two types of customers that use credit cards. There's folks that pay off their balance in full every month, and those are called more transactors. This is obviously a great card for transactors yeah. because of yeah. the rewards. But um, it's also an amazing card for people that are building credit. This might be, you know, in my opinion, one of the best credit building cards out there as well. Mm -hmm. And for customers that are using it to build their credit, we do earn the economics on those balances. And for customers that are transacting, um, it's all about the ecosystem benefit. And we've actually seen data on this from Robinhood Gold customers. Robinhood Gold customers are much more likely to adopt all of our other products. Their balances with us are higher. Mm -hmm. Their average revenue per user is multiples of a non-gold customer. So once someone joins gold, they tend to increase the amount of money they put in Robinhood. They do more with us. They're a more profitable customer. They get more value. So the idea is to just add more things to Robinhood gold and for it to be a no-brainer value proposition. The whole uh, idea behind Robinhood gold is if you're a high net worth individual and you're accustomed to getting a, a level of service from your bank or other financial institution, we want to open up that sort of private client, high net worth experience for just $5 a month to the mass market. And that's where the retirement offer comes in, the high yield on cash, the premium credit card, all of these are products that you'd have to have a lot of money to be able to qualify for. And we're just trying to open them up to as many people as possible. Retail's back. Bad. And so is Robinhood, 51% this year, up 17 billion almost. Since the Bitcoin ETF, you're up 59%. Now, somewhat, we gotta re get somewhat related, uh... but somewhat related, but it, it, should, it shouldn't necessarily, there's no meme stocks, really. I guess there are. We had Reddit and that came public. IPO markets open, Bitcoin's at 70,000. These are animal spirits and you probably love this world uh, of, of animal spirits at this point. We have to get you guys the uh, Robinhood 24-hour market data so you can see what's happening in the, in the overnight. Yeah. Uh, this market close data is, uh, is a little bit stale. You're up more than 51, is that what you're telling me? Or? Well, I mean, I think it would be good to, we have this product okay, 24-hour we'll market <laughs> yeah, shows the- uh, We'll add in the dollar nineteen. The today. overnight price. Well, it's a 6% gain today. Uh, can I just go back to the, to the credit card? I, I mean, Vlad, you weathered a pretty big storm back in 2021. In January of 2021, yeah. there were issues with the capital call that came up. As a result, you had to restrict trading on the platform. You got called before Congress in February of that year. And I, I realize this is three years have gone by, but there were big issues. And, and, and the knock on you guys at the time was that you weren't savvy credit managers and risk managers at that point, that you were great technologists, but there are, are some issues that take place in capital markets and that you guys got caught flat-footed on that. Yeah. When you open up and go into a credit card, I think that probably raises more questions about will you be able to effectively manage the capital flows and the potential risks that come if there's a downturn in the economy, if there's a meltdown in the markets. I, I think uh, it's fair. I mean. Mm -hmm. Back in 2021, we were still a startup. We were a small company. We obviously learned a lot from uh, everything that happened around COVID, from sort of the huge spike of retail investing to you know, all the events around, around the meme stocks. And 
what we have now is just uh, an unbelievable team. And with the credit, with the credit card product, you know, we have, uh, we acquired this company X1, great team. Their chief credit officer was uh, formerly running credit at New Bank, which has been very, very successful. So um, the team, you know, we, we have uh, grizzled veterans that went through all the events of 2021 and have kind of the scar tissue from getting past that. And then we also have amazing experienced people that have done this before that we've brought in. And um, we're very excited about this product. I think customers will love it. I also think we've been very prudent about the rollout strategy. We know people are excited, but we're going to make sure that, you know, all the boxes are checked and that it's rolled out in a prudent and, and safe way. So you think AI is, is back to why you think this is happening. You think AI and the excitement around it has got animal spirits going again in high gear. I mean, I think you just look at the, um, the, the sort of like NVIDIA announcements, right? I don't know the last time that, you know, a silicon hardware manufacturer has gotten so many people excited about their new products and the new architecture. So I think um, it's really a bright spot for American innovation. You know, we were worried a little bit over the past few years about whether America is losing its competitive edge to China and some of the players overseas. But, but then you see all the wonderful stuff that's happening in the AI industry led here. And it makes me feel just very good to provide access to this market. If this, it's, it, it, you think this has got legs? I mean, it, this time, because the meme stock craze kind of ended quickly and painfully. You think it's different now? You think you've got a better? At this point, I've gone through so many <laughs> sort of cycles. Yeah ups and downs, high interest rates, low interest rates, even higher interest rates that, you know, I, I don't even really think about it. I'm just trying to serve the customers as well as possible, make the products even better. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the market environment's just gonna continue to change. We just have to be ready. The goals that you're talking about being everything to having assets for everyone there. I mean, that sounds a little similar to what you hear Elon Musk talking about with X, too, that he wants this to be much more um, and to find ways to really reach into people's finances, kind of like with PayPal or something along that, too. Do you see them as a risk or as a competitor, um, I should say, a competitor? I mean, I think Elon uh, has entered so many industries and, you know, has built compelling products and say what you will about, you know, the Twitter X acquisition. But, you know, when I talk to entrepreneurs in the social media space, yeah. what their take is now X is a platform that they're paying attention to yeah. in maybe a way that they weren't with, I guess you have with to Twitter. With yeah. So, yeah, of course, we pay attention to everyone. We try to learn from what others are doing. I think as far as X, I think it's pretty early in the financial services journey. But uh, it's exciting to have people innovating in our space. And if it pushes us to up our game even more, then I like that. Who, who's your target audience for the card? Is it a younger? Um, I mean, you're looking for people who have wealth because you want the gold members to really be people who have assets to go into it. But what age group are we talking about? Well, our typical customer is uh, in their 30s. But we also have a lot of people that are interested in Robinhood who are in college campuses or recent grads starting their first job. And I think the great thing about this card is um, the card really fits a multitude of use cases, whereas other companies would have multiple cards for each of their customer segments. We really wanted to get that premium card to as many people as possible. So in that sense, we do think it'll be very useful and probably the best credit building card out there. So it's good for people that are at the beginning of their credit journey, but also if you're someone that pays your balance off in full each month, that 3% cash back on all categories is pretty unbeatable. Yeah. I mean, it compares very favorably to any other cash back card you can get on yeah, the like market. Yeah, like 1.75% is the best I've seen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've looked everywhere and we, we really wanted with this product to to, to win on rewards. We didn't want to just cross sell a good credit card product to our brokerage customers and have them adopt it. We wanted it to kind of stand alone in the category and be attractive as a source of new customers into Robinhood. 
So I think we'll have succeeded when we see cu customers that you know, were maybe not interested in opening a brokerage account with us, coming to us for the credit card and then discovering all the brokerage and retirement offerings that, that we have. There's no reason to have a Robin Hood account, unfortunately. Because you can't trade. Because we can't trade. <laughs> Unless well, it's for the credit card. I, guess, I should yeah. mention uh, the credit card is one, and we have a great IRA match. I, I think it's the best IRA on the market. If you're a Robinhood Gold member, we match 3%, and we do that on not just contributions, but rollovers from 401ks and transfers from other brokerages. And last year, we ended with uh, a little bit under $1.5 billion in IRA assets on the platform. And... Uh, as of, I believe yesterday, we've crossed four billion. So we went from, it took us about a year to get from zero to the first billion and a half. We've gone from one and a half to, to over four in under a quarter. So that product has been resonating very, very strongly with customers. Right. And it's you know very heartwarming to actually help people save for retirement and give them these incentives when they might not qualify for traditional employer 401k plans. Right. It's good to have you. Where's that card? Can I, can I have that card? He's hoping you forget it. Yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> you, is, is that actually work? It works. This is my actual card. It was in my wallet uh, yeah, it, earlier. Don't hand it back to him, Vlad. It actually doesn't have the number on it, so that's why I'm so uh, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not too shy to hand it out. I, I, I know, I've done that before and pulled mine out on TV, and I had to, you had to get change a new card. it because yeah. people could zoom in and say, you know, stupid. Yeah. I have lots of people who have my credit it's card. It's about as simple as possible, just the Robin Hood logo, the chip, and then your name and the Visa logo on the back. So no number, no expiration date, no sensitive information. Thanks for bringing it. You're very, he's very excited about this. And, and it is a cool looking card. I'd kind of like to have one. Maybe just a fake one. Maybe that'll work. I mean, we can, we can do that. We can work something <laughs> out. Maybe a fake card, sure. I'll draw one for you right now for you. All right. Glad, Glad thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next on Squawk Pod, how Elon Musk's Neuralink works in the brain and whether it even should. Plus, more on Merck's expensive new treatment for a rare lung condition. Dr. Scott Gottlieb, former FDA commissioner, joins us. A lot of the price controls in the marketplace also push up these launch prices because a company like Merck knows they're going to have to discount very heavily, especially into the Medicaid population, into 340Bs. So that $238,000 per year price isn't the price they're actually going to get after they have to pay some mandatory discount. Welcome back to Squawk Pod. Here's Becky Quick. Elon Musk's Neuralink implant enabled a human with paralysis to play chess online. But lawmaker Earl Blumenauer has raised concerns to the FDA about whether it should be tested in humans at all. Joining us right now is Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He's former FDA commissioner, board member of Illumina and Pfizer, and a CNBC contributor. Um, Dr. Gottlieb, let's start out with this story because it's one we've been following pretty closely. There are questions that are being raised by this lawmaker about whether the FDA should have approved human trials before they actually did their investigations and checked out the company. What do you think? Well, look, I would imagine the FDA did investigate um, some of the allegations that were surfaced publicly about the conduct of those animal trials. It's not at all clear that the people who are overseeing the human trials here, and they probably aren't the same people who oversaw those animal trials, and it's not a foregone conclusion that the company itself did those animal studies. A lot of times these are outsourced. I think from an FDA regulatory standpoint, if there were real allegations of poor handling of the animals in those preclinical studies, um, that would probably heighten the scrutiny that FDA, would, that FDA would apply to the trial more broadly, including the human uh, aspects of the trial, the phase one, phase, you know, the, the trials with, uh, with human subjects. And so I suppose the FDA did that, that they're looking at the company's oversight of clinical trials and their protocols that they have in place to ensure good governance of those trials. I, I would imagine that if there were real findings with respect to how the animals were handled in these studies or just mere allegations of that and the FDA um, did an investigation, did an inspection, that that would heighten their scrutiny in terms of how they would look at the human trials as well. I mean, I've been completely impressed with what I've seen um, just from the ability of this paralyzed individual, this gentleman, to, to be able to play online chess. What he said about it was pretty phenomenal. Um, other people have said, no, there's been research like this done before. You know a lot more about this. What are your thoughts on it? 
Look, there's a number of companies working on these um, brain-computer interfaces. Two other companies have FDA clearance to conduct human studies. There's been about 40 implants. There was a federal study back in 2022 looking across this uh, this category and documented about 40 cases where these devices had been implanted uh, in human subjects. And so this is a technology that we've been working on for a while. Neuralink is another entrant into this space. I do believe it has promise. Um, the ability to read electrical waves off of the brain and be able to correlate how those would um, line up with certain outputs, certain intended outputs, is a technology that we've been working on for a long time. We collectively mean the research community. A lot of this is based on machine learning. You're looking at patterns for the electrical impulses put off by the brain and trying to determine how those would translate into intended actions and then trying to stimulate those actions either through a computer or through a mechanized device that the user may wear to try to restore some partial function for someone who, for example, is a quadriplegic. So these technologies, I think, have a lot of promise. Other companies are working on it. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. Whoever invents it, fantastic. Kudos to all of them for trying to push this research forward. Um, Scott, while you're here, let's talk about another issue we were talking about this morning. You were listening in. Um, we were talking about the approval of Merck's new, new treatment for a deadly lung condition. It sounds, uh, again, like an amazing advance, but it's pretty hefty uh, in terms of the price tag. Yeah, look, this is a very promising drug. This is the first drug to attack an underlying mechanism that causes disease progression, the vascular proliferation that we see in this disease. And it's a devastating disease affecting about 40,000 Americans um, the price is high. It's higher than what people were anticipating. There were some external groups that were uh, estimating what a cost-effective price would be. ICER is one of those groups. They usually come in very low. They were estimating something in the range of thirty-five dollars to $40,000 a year. This is coming in at $238,000 a year based on the $14,000 price per vial that's administered every three weeks. About two-thirds of the population is covered by Medicare and Medicaid, so about one-third will be commercially insured. So we'll see what the government does with the pricing of this and how they push back with some of the authorities they have under the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. But uh, this is a really promising breakthrough. Merck, remember, had acquired this asset um, back in 2021 when they did the Acceleron acquisition for about $11.5 billion. This was originally being developed for certain forms of blood cancer, like multiple myeloma. Did it work with multiple myeloma, or is this the only indication that it's been approved for? Because that was a, a, an $11 billion acquisition. Right. So at the time that Merck acquired the company, this was a lead asset. It was being developed by then for um, this indication. Celgene had been working with the company to try to develop in certain blood disorders and blood cancers. Those trials didn't work. They had pivoted already to this indication. Uh, there was another marketed drug that they also, Merck also acquired with that acquisition. Uh, does about $500 um, uh, million dollars in sales. So it's not a very big drug from the standpoint you know, of the blockbusters that pharmaceutical companies usually go after. So this was the lead asset that they were they were going after with that acquisition. I mean, maybe that explains why these drugs are so expensive. The only way to get things to market is to get bought up by a bigger company, which has the ability and resources to get things through the FDA approval process and get it to market. It costs a lot of money for those acquisitions, $11 billion. If you're looking at why drugs are so expensive, that may be part of the issue. Yeah, look, and I also would say that a lot of the price controls in the marketplace also push up these launch prices because a company like Merck knows they're going to have to discount very heavily, especially into the Medicaid population, into 340B. So that $238,000 per year price isn't the price they're actually going to get after they have to pay some mandatory discounts across the entire marketplace. So they push up the launch prices and the list prices, knowing that they're going to have to discount a good portion of that back to the government and the commercial insurers. So we need to be mindful of that, too. This is going to probably be heavily utilized within the 340B population. Um, so that's a very big program right now that causes the forces mandatory discounts back to uh, back to the insurers. Scott, thank you. It sounds like a far longer discussion that we need to have about why drug prices are high and how the system works and doesn't. Uh, Dr. Gottlieb, thank you. That's Squawk Pod for today. Thanks for listening. Squawk Box is hosted by Joe Kernan, Becky Quick, and Andrew Ross Sorkin. You can tune in weekday mornings on CNBC at 6 Eastern. And to get the smartest takes and analysis from our TV show right into your ears, please follow Squawk Pod wherever you get your podcasts. We'll meet you back here tomorrow. We are clear. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much.